Hi friends, this is Janet. I'm at Banea Muna Synagogue. We're going to have to do uh, our videos of Banea Muna in several different takes because so much has changed. But this is a little bit of the outside across from the parking lot. And down here, if you see that dome, that gold dome, that represents the original dome on the building that has been destroyed. That's the preschool entrance. Okay, we're coming up the steps here to the covered parking, to the beautiful doors that open up into the lobby, what is now the new lobby of the synagogue. Welcome. And there's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Come right this way. We are here tonight for a Shabbat dinner, and we thought it would be a good time to just take a little video of what the synagogue looks like now. On this side, is the library. I'm just gonna show you the doors that go into it because we're not gonna go into it for the moment. And there's the um, Pesadik food that's still waiting for people to buy it for the last two days of Passover. And through this door is the synagogue's main office. Here's our friend sitting at the desk checking us in. Thank you so much. And we're going down here. This is the Sisterhood gift shop. The outside of it, at least. And the thing that you might recognize, when the NATO building was taken down, they saved the Ark from the Zaro Sanctuary and placed it here in the main lobby of the synagogue. And this is the Ark. I'm gonna go a little bit closer so you can see some of the detail on the doors. It's not really used to hold Taurus these days, but it is a beautiful piece and it deserved to be saved and shown off in the main lobby of the synagogue. Now I'm gonna turn left and I'm going to go into a, another lobby right outside the sanctuary. But before we go in the sanctuary, I'm going to take you into what used to be the main entrance of the synagogue, if I can get it get through. Yes, wonderful. We used to enter where those windows are. We used to enter through the synagogue, to the synagogue, through the doors that were there. Once the renovation took place and the new lobby was constructed, this became a uh, and a lobby that sometimes has small dinners and other activities. And I'm going to show you that this is also where they placed all the memorial boards. And when you come in person someday to our reunion, you can come if you have relatives whose names are on these boards, you can come here into this lobby and find the name of your relative quite a few memorial boards because obviously the synagogue's been around here for decades. On the opposite wall here is a little atrium area, an outdoor area that has seating, plants, very, very nice, really attractive for you to contemplate, sit and contemplate. Uh, and I'm going to show you also that saved also from oh i'm the lighting is not really good for you to see all of this but taken originally from the old synagogue this piece and made into a table it's a grand banquet here's the information for you to take a look at it okay we're going to go back out and into davis chapel unless I don't believe there'll be services going on at the moment. We're out in that same lobby again, right outside the auditorium in the sanctuary. Here are the doors to Davis Chapel. And Davis Chapel is used quite a bit these days for Shabbat services, evening services, etc., etc. Very nice, comfortable seating. I'm not sure how many people can sit in here, but many of our friends have sat in this chapel for years, and on Sunday morning, they do use it for the children as well. 
You can see the arc here at the end of the room. Okay, now we're gonna go back out of Davis Chapel and hopefully we can go into the sanctuary through these, once again, large doors. And here we are. Remember being in the sanctuary for all kinds of holidays, for Shabbat, for bar mitzvahs, for bat mitzvahs, and so on. There's some different design here from the remodeling. However, it very much represents what you, I think, will remember with the Ark and the Bema and the 12 tribes, the stained glass, the 12 tribes, which I'm showing you now, the readers' podiums, and on the other side, I'm gonna step up here so you can see the Ark, the Ner Tamid, and the other stained glass of the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you're standing here in the sanctuary and you're the rabbi or speaker, you're going to be looking out and seeing all the people in the seats, which many of these seats have been dedicated by people who wanted to make a contribution to the congregation. And there are nameplates on the back of the seats remembering uh, in remembrance of those people. Now, I think in part, we're set up in the Kaiser Auditorium. I'm not really sure. I think for services, and now at B'nai Amuna services on Shabbat and on holidays, music, live music is allowed. And so what you're gonna see here, quite a few music stands, uh, microphones, and so on for the service. And this evening, there will be a dinner prior to services prepared by Alain Avaton. It's an Israeli dinner. It will be delicious. And I'm going to step in. You remember the revolving doors, or not the revolving doors, but the doors that push open to the side. And I'm now in the auditorium. The stage is still here, we used the screen often for movies and other events, uh, dinners, etc. And tonight, here's a table showing you what the table looks like for the Shabbat meal. Next time when we come here, I will be able to show you more of the building, where the preschool is, where the offices are, etc. And I'm going to have Brian Browse and Carol Browse Winland wave to you. Brian, of course, is on our committee. He's the youngest one. And there's his sister, Carol, here for the dinner, and they're saving seats for us. I might just step real quickly across 